For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome custom guitars. Now, I'm turning my passion into a profession by seeking out old, beat-up guitars and giving them new life, all while trying to make a profit. I'll be searching everywhere for used gear that I can refret, rewire, repaint, whatever it takes to make it a real shredder. This is Trash to Thrash. The Randy Rhodes Signature Jackson Flying V, to me, is the most wicked of all Flying V guitars. Not only is it the most vicious looking, but it set the standard for so many other companies to create their versions of it. From the moment it was introduced, it started a new trend of non-symmetrical Flying Vs. Last week I showed you three different Rhodes guitars I'm starting to work on. A 1994 JRR 94 concept, a 1992 EX Professional, and another 1994 JRR 94 concept. I finished up the 92 EX and it turned out awesome. I started this 94 concept Rhodes and it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted so I ended up scraping off the alien blood splatter and sanding it back down. Well, it's ready for round two. I'm also ready to start the other 94 concept now. This is the one that was from my personal collection, but I have a few Rhodes now and I don't really play it anymore. These 94 concepts are excellent guitars. I built other ones before too. This is one of the first 94 Jackson Rhodes concepts that I ever rebuilt. This is the Purple Tiger Rhodes. The customer wanted it purple to blue burst, which I had never done, but I had done these stripes before, and I laid down a solid clear coat over it. And this thing turned out amazing. This was one of the first guitars I ever did for another person, so letting this one go was really difficult, and wasn't really parting with many of them. Of course I loaded it with the kill switch. The customer had seen my orange Tiger Rhodes that I did just a few months before. This finish is definitely one of my favorite finishes I've ever done on a guitar. My original inspiration for this guitar came from the early 90s ESP Carry King Flying Vs. You almost never see these guitars around anymore. At the time I was performing live at a lot of parties and I would build a new custom guitar every time depending on what the occasion was. 4th of July, St. Patrick's Day, and this was for a Halloween party. So naturally, I went with orange and black. But I loved the red on these guitars and decided to throw red into the center of it. The first step with a finish like this is to do your base colors. You want to do your burst first so you're not adding a bunch of color over the tape. You don't want to have too much paint over the tape because then it's going to build up and get too thick and it's going to be much more difficult to pull the tape after with clean lines. As always with a new idea, I tested it on a test guitar first. So this Strat was my test. I created these tape lines by cutting them out by hand with an X-Acto knife. Then I sprayed the whole thing black and once I peeled the tape back, it revealed the burst below with the black stripes on top. This time lapse is sped up to 5,000%. So this was actually about 25 minutes to take the tape off this guitar. Even in this beat up form, I still think this was a really cool guitar. Years ago, inspired by Unearth, I had written Kill and covered it in tape on the top horn. This guitar features a red EMG81 pickup and a cheap matching kill switch in red. This guitar has a real junkyard feel to it. I mounted the 9 volt battery in the empty neck cavity. A real Eddie Van Halen kind of thing to do. Although it's beat up, this guitar still plays really good and sounded great. But I know if I go to try to sell it in this form, no one's going to buy it. So it's time to strip it down and get it ready to paint. This here is the body of my first Rhodes I ever had. This is a guitar I used to play on stage with my band Luckdown back 15 plus years ago in high school. It's a solid guitar, but I think it's time to give it some new life and move on. Give it to a new owner and make it really awesome. The reason I don't play this concept too much anymore is because I recently got this guitar. This is a 2020 Jackson Rhodes RR24Q. This guitar has everything I look for in a guitar. A beautiful maple top, gold hardware, a Floyd Rose, direct mount pickups, 24 frets, and a matched headstock. I also love the bound ebony fretboard, shark fin inlays, reverse headstock, and Seymour Duncan pickups. Plus, it's purple. You can't really beat purple. This 94 concept is going to be a real interesting one. I sprayed it teal and purple, 
Someone had used these colors together on a mock-up I saw online, and I loved it. So I decided to try it, but with the crazy stripes like I did on the two Tiger Roads. When I tape up these guitars, I lay the tape down on my workbench, and literally draw out the pattern by hand. Then I come back with an X-Acto knife and trace out my drawings. Then I simply apply the pattern onto the guitar and go spray it. It looks pretty cool. I really like the way that the colors kind of splattered over each other rather than having a smooth burst or fade. For the pickups, I think I'm going to go with the EMG 81X in the bridge and the EMG 60X in the neck. They're a more modern sounding pair than the classic EMG 81 and 60 and I've wanted to try them for a while. Alright, we'll get back to this one soon. But the Alien Blood Rhodes is ready for some new splatter. So here we go. This pattern looks great, so this time I'm not going to mess with it. It still doesn't look like the Alien Blood Haxon with the cracking and all, but hey, it looks great and I like it. This guitar is nearly 30 years old, so the fretboard was pretty dried out. This was a thirsty one, it took quite a bit of lemon oil to get this one right, but look how good that looks. To bring some life back into this fretboard, I use Formby's Lemon Oil Treatment. It's important that the lemon oil you use on a guitar's fretboard doesn't contain any water or silicone which this brand doesn't. I apply a thick bead of lemon oil down the fretboard of the guitar and then rub it in with a soft cloth. I had originally painted the black pick guard to match the body, but I felt it was too much alien blood, so I made a custom clear pick guard and bridge for this guitar. I installed a new nut and added more alien blood to the headstock and tuners. This thing's really starting to come together. The pick guards look awesome, for this guitar, I went with EMG Kirk Hammett Bone Breakers, since they have the green logos that match the paint job on the guitar. I added some green LEDs under the clear pickguard that activate when you plug the guitar in, and of course I used a black Iron Age kill switch with a green LED here. I used split loom tubing to cover up some of the wiring. Now this thing is a true beast. It turned out pretty amazing, I must say. The custom clear bridge and pickguard turned out to be an awesome feature on this guitar. The LEDs under the pickguard, the EMG bone breakers, everything came together really cool at the end of the build. The Iron Age kill switch looks so cool with the green LED, and they're so fun to use when playing that it's just a great add-on. I painted the pickups and the headstock with two different colors of Alien Blood Green to give them a little extra pop since I felt they blended in a little too much with the body. The split loom wiring looks really cool, kind of gives it a back to the future vibe. And there's something about being able to see some of the wiring and tubing through the clear pick guard that really gave this an alien spacecraft feel. Around the back it's got the Guitar Guts skull logo and a Goto 9 volt battery access door. These old Japanese Jacksons were really something special. The back of the guitar is a clean flat black, but the splatter came over the sides which looks really awesome. Here's a little sample of how it sounds, along with its white and red counterpart from last week. They sound awesome. Thank you to Henry at Druba Geek Covers on Instagram for jamming some drums for me on this. I also build custom cases for many of my custom builds and I paint them to match the guitars. Uh, both sides are painted so no matter how you have it set, you'll see the awesome alien blood. You'll always know it's your guitar when you see this case out playing gigs or whatever. Or if you have them all locked in the closet together, you don't need to put the blue tape on it and label it. Four latches on the, the opening side, a nice handle there, and then also the corners, I put this really nice metal corner on. Um, all the corners have that. Pop it up, of course there are the straps that hold it open so it doesn't fall all the way back. Got some padding up on the top, and it's all velvet lined inside here, so really nice custom case just made exactly for this guitar. 
So the guitar fits right down, down into there, drops in, and it doesn't move at all. Velvet and padding under and foam underneath the headstock here. A nice chunk here to really support the neck. Up on top there's a piece of foam and the guitar just sits in here floating. It's a really nice case. Um, here there's a storage compartment so if you have like a strap or some strings, guitar picks, whatever else you want to store in there. Of course the case has rubber feet on the bottom and the long hinge side also has rubber feet and matching Alien Blood hinges on it so I thought that was kind of a cool touch. Alien Blood Splatter has become one of my favorite finishes. I recently partnered up with a pedal board builder who's making me custom Guitar Guts pedal boards to sell. He sends me raw unfinished pedal boards and I put my own finishes on them and LED lights underneath. There's a switch on the bottom that you can access from the top to turn the lights on and off. They feature rubber feet and holes on each side for the cables to route through. They also have a nice aluminum handle on top to carry it around. Okay, so I told you guys I have way too many guitars in my collection. I've been selling guitars from my personal collection, and a few more have sold. I sold my 7-string Ibanez RG7420. I have an 8-string also, and I don't really play either of them too much, so I decided I'll sell them both at some point and just get a killer 8-string. This one went to somebody in Las Vegas, Nevada. I also picked up this Green Rhodes RX10D in Green Flame Maple. I'm a sucker for green guitars, and my plan for this one was to outfit it with some chrome pickups and a kill switch, and upgrade the bridge to an original Floyd Rose in chrome, but as soon as I posted it, my Instagram friend Steve Pooch bought it, so off to Massachusetts this one goes. This was the first Frankenstrat I ever built and painted. It was made from real cheap parts, and the Floyd was just surface mounted. It was a guitar I made to experiment on, and it served its purpose. I was asked by someone if I had a cheap, display-only Frankenstrat available, so I showed him this. He loved it and bought it. So it's off to Florida for this one. Before we get out of here, I want to update you guys on the guitar I showed you a few episodes back on one of the Van Halen episodes. I repainted a 5150 replica for a customer. I never was a huge fan of the 5150 until I painted one and saw it in person. Brad reassembled it himself and sent me a video of it to share with you all. It turned out amazing. I really like it. He shimmed the neck and the nut, dropped the action down, Mirror polished the frets, installed an EVH Frankenstein pickup, upgraded the Floyd with titanium hardware, noiseless springs, and a 42mm FU-Tone big brass block. He really decked this thing out. Great job, Brad. I love it. Thanks so much for watching this episode. Next week I'll continue on the purple and teal roads and I'll start a few more awesome guitars. This Jackson Kelly and this Jackson Roswell replica. So be sure to hit that subscribe button Hit the notification bell to be notified when brand new episodes drop. Hit the like button and leave a comment down below and let me know what you're thinking of this series. I love it when you guys share the show on your social media. You guys are really helping the show grow. The more people who watch, the more of these things I'm going to keep making. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys very soon. Rock on, my friends.